Happy Solar Sunday. It's, I'm Jamie Green, the Solar Queen. And in this video or this live stream, I am going to be talking about three reasons, three, three reasons why a homeowner or a business can't go solar. So I hope that you all are having a wonderful week. Happy May 1st. It is May Day. I don't know if you had the tradition growing up where you would go and leave a basket of flowers on someone's doorstep. I used to do that as a little girl, but I haven't done it in a while. But it would have been fun to do. Actually, you know, I did this a couple of weeks ago or a couple of years ago with my mother-in-law. I left her some flowers on her doorstop doorstep. So, uh, so it's been a little while since I've been live on my solar Sunday show, but I figured now is better than never or, or not never, but to, you know, it's just been a while. So I'm happy to be back doing solar Sunday shows. I have been traveling with my family as well as, uh, speaking at conferences and whatnot. So I'm really happy to be back. We are in the swing of things when it comes to solar. Hi, Scott Ricard. Um, you're in Florida, so it's like nine o'clock where you're at. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend and uh, enjoying the weather there in Flor sunny Florida. Scott, I'm curious if you have solar on your house in Florida. Um, the, the governor of Florida put a stop to the utility companies from killing net metering. So that is amazing for all Florida I guess you're called Floridians, Florida, uh, Florida homeowners and business owners. So that's really good. Hello, Doug Wing. I hope you're doing well. And is it hot in Arizona? See, I, I love it. I um, I love that I have friends all over the country. I am looking at flights to go to Atlanta. Um, I have a mastermind meetup coming up in Atlanta in a couple of months. And there, the tickets are like between $800 and $1,000. It's kind of crazy. I think this is what we're in for with all the gas prices going up and everything. Uh, Scott, you say you have a wonderful governor there. Yeah, I mean, I think he's 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 doing a great job for the state of Florida. So that's really, really good. Um, Flor like we were, we were nervous that the net metering was going to go away in Florida, but thankfully he stepped in and said, stop it. Um, here in California, we are also facing um, the impending NEM 3.0. So for people who have solar in California, years ago, there used to be NEM, just the, the regular net energy metering agreement. They did away, they sunsetted that because um, they were getting more adoption to solar energy. Now we're in NEM 2.0 and we've been having NEM 2.0 for several years now. It is not as not as advantageous as the uh, original NEM, but it's still very, very um, excellent for homeowners and business owners who go solar. Uh, it's something where you do a true up once a year. You can uh, get kilowatt hour credits, and if you don't use them all up, you can get reimbursed or paid out by the utility company. So it's kind of nice. And the utility companies here in California allow you to offset your system a little bit larger than what your historic usage is just because they know that people add electric vehicles or they add projects to the home and whatnot. But if they go, you know, we don't know what the CPUC and the utility companies are going to be, I don't want to say debating, but what they're going to be negotiating on for NEM 3.0. But we should have something here soon. Um, I believe in June, we're going to have something, um, something announced and we'll see if we have to go and rally again and protest. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this week has been this last week. It was a crazy busy week. My daughter is coming into the room here. You need to go into the other room. Yeah. Nope. I'm not buying that for you. Uh, just one second. Uh, she wants me to buy, <laughs> she wants me to buy her a game on her iPad. Um, yeah, you need to go, honey. Thank you. Unless you want to come talk, talk with everybody about solar energy. You're welcome to. She doesn't know, but she comes with me on the solar projects. Um, so we don't know what, I mean, that's the, you know, that's a good thing. We don't know what's going to happen with NEM 3.0, but we definitely want to make sure that it is favorable for homeowners and business owners who go solar. And so there's kind of this crazy thing going on in the industry. One, we have tariffs happening. So uh, prices of equipment are skyrocketing. 
Uh, I'm seeing homeowners uh, go solar or they come to me for a quote and they might sit on it for a little while. I follow up and I don't hear anything. And then they come to me and they're ready to go solar. But then the panels have gone up, increased in pricing. So if you are looking at solar and uh, you want to lock in the pricing, it's important to go ahead and sign your solar home improvement agreement and the net metering agreement and get going quickly because to keep yourself hedging yourself from rate increases uh, from the utility company and hedging yourself from uh, util or equipment increases from just because of the tariffs that are being applied to it, importing all of the goods that are coming from other parts of the world when it comes to solar equipment. And secondly, the tax credit, the federal tax credit is set to reduce up to 22% uh, January 1st. And I know we're at May 1st. But for some of these homeowners who are looking at solar and maybe you live in a, 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 you know, an older home, uh, I, I had several appointments this week with homeowners and this is what made me think, oh my gosh, this could, de this could be a, something that would be very helpful and useful to homeowners to hear and business owners too, because it applies to you, but just at a larger scale. Um, the first, so what I wanted to cover were three reasons why a homeowner or a business owner might not qualify for solar. So the first reason is that the overall cost for their project just might not pencil out financially. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the cost per kilowatt hour that they are paying or the price per kilowatt hour that they're paying to the utility company might not be as expensive as it is, as it is here in California. And believe it or not, it is like on average 34, 30 to 34 cents a kilowatt hour based on where which area you live in California. So the average kilowatt hour rate that I worked on for a homeowner today who went solar was 34 cents a kilowatt hour. It just blows my mind. Um, and I was able to help them get solar and a battery for half the price per kilowatt hour, which some might go, well, why was it half? Or, you know, maybe, maybe, um, someone, it's a little bit more. And the reason for that, and I'm going to tell you why, is this person doesn't need a new roof. This person also doesn't need a main service panel upgrade. They are just getting solar and a battery. And when that happens, and we don't have all these extra adders that we call it in the industry. I had a homeowner um, that I met with and she's like, we have two layers of roof. Um, one's a wood shingle, one's a metal shingle. The other thing that she wanted to do was basically double her um, the amount of energy that that solar system or that they have used historically. They wanted to double it because they're planning on an air conditioning unit. They're adding. They're planning on four EV. No, sorry, not four, but three EV cars. With they want to be able to charge the cars with the solar system. They need a main service panel upgrade and they want a battery. So price per or price per um, kilowatt hour. It's going to be more than what they've already been spending to the utility company for their existing energy. So they have to make that decision. Is this worth it? Um, you know, is it worth it for us to make this investment? And it's a big transition. And so I've helped a lot of homeowners get roofs. I've helped a lot of homeowners get main service panel upgrades, which, man, those are those can take some time and drag out just based on the utility company um, batteries and panels and all that stuff. I've helped so many homeowners do all these things. Like not everybody needs a new roof. Not everybody needs a main panel upgrade. And so it really all depends on what it is that their house needs or their building. Um, Cause some roofs and some commercial roofs need uh, some commercial buildings need new commercial roofs. And so if that's something that they're looking to re-roof anyways, they should consider solar because of the tax credit, because of depreciation because of the cost of when they're getting solar and uh, they just, when the roof and solar is combined on a commercial scale and even on sometimes on, depending on where you live, um, California, it kind of pencils out to being basically some people, it's like almost like getting a free roof. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. When you look at the cost of electricity, what solar does and getting the roof and you combine it together and you spread it out over time and you let the loan amortize. I've been working. I'm such a nerd. I've been working on loan amortization schedules and I've learned a ton and I see the, how things pencil out 
when you can take the tax credit and you can depreciate the system. So I know this is a lot of information, but the overall cost for the project, depending on if it's a, um, you know, a commercial uh, property or a residential property, it might not pencil out. And for that reason, they might decide not to go solar. And that is okay. It is because at the end of the day, going solar, while I would love for every homeowner and every business owner to say, I did it because I wanted to help the planet. It's just not the case. I would say like 95% of people are doing it because it's a financial decision and it's usually a good one. And usually it pencils out, but sometimes it doesn't and then they wait. So that's one reason why someone might not go solar. The second reason, and if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments and I will share them as I um, go on about this. The second reason might be there's too much shade. They live on, you know, the, the north side of the roof of a, of a hillside and they have too much shading from the, uh, from the hillside or the mountain, or they just flat out don't have enough roof space. Like we're seeing more and more homes with uh, smaller square footage of roof because they're putting homes into these cookie cutter, cookie cutter neighborhoods. And they're going two story, three stories up. And then their roof is space is so limited. Sometimes it might be a north and south facing roof. And the unideal location to put solar panels are on the north side. So this is another example of a homeowner that I met with this week. He really wanted solar. And he's been he and his wife had been looking into solar for at least 18 months. And they were really, just really ready to go. Um, and then we, he gave me his address and I pulled up his, I pulled up his home and it just was uh, too much shading, north and south facing planes and the planes that could go solar had built out. So very, very, it just was an un, um, unsuitable roof for solar. And they were planning on adding on, they were planning to switch everything over. And this is kind of goes back to where it doesn't pencil out for them because they needed a new roof. They know they needed a main service panel upgrade. They were considering a battery because solar and a battery make a lot of sense, especially in California where we might have blackouts and we have time of use and the time of use is during 4 to 9 p.m. where if you have a battery and you and you know you want a battery just because you don't want to be inconvenienced if there is a power outage, um, those batteries can be dual functioning. You know, they can give, give you power during the uh, 4 to 9 p.m. or those peak hours and they can give you power during a power outage. But when we looked at his uh, rooftop, there was just too many build outs, too many um, fire codes and setbacks that would have prevented him from going solar. And the only plant roof plane that allowed for him to put any sort of array with at least even, you know, four or six panels on his roof was on the north west facing plane where he had his neighbor's trees were just tons of shade on his roof. So I told him the truth and I said, well, I would love to help you go solar. I just don't think that this is a feasible project given the fact that you have all these things and it would take a lot more panels to get you what you needed, just the nature of the location of his roof. So that was kind of like, oh, because he really, really wanted solar. But those are some of the reasons why people might not get solars because of um, too much shade and not enough roof space to be able to offset all of this, I mean, I could have maybe put four panels on his roof um, and that's just not enough. Uh, so he appreciated the honesty. <laughs> no one had really talked to him or, or mentioned that to him, um, but he really, we, it was still a great conversation and well worth our time to meet. So, so that's the second reason. And the third reason why people might not be able to get solar is that they rent the house and, or the building. So, you know, there's lease people taking lease or sign, um, you know, commercial leases, but they're not the building owner. If that's the case, then you really need to consider um, talking to the landlord or the, the building owner to see, especially if you're going to be in a lease for a long extended period of time. Um, so that's something that you would want to do. And then if you're renting the house and you know you're going to be renting that house for a long time, again, speak to your landlord. Jerry Leventhal comments, honestly, going solar should be researched thoroughly by each property owner before choosing the route to take. 
all solar is not equal. They are there are different systems for different uh, real. I'm, I think she means real reality situations, and there are ways to save money by doing some prep work yourself. So the expert installer does just the stuff you cannot. I agree with that. Um, you know, this, so one of the things I wanted to share about this is for the people who can't go with solar that really, really want to do, do solar is go through your home or your business and see what you can do to reduce your energy consumption. Uh, if you haven't moved your lights over to LED, you should switch them all over to LED lights. If you have things that are plugged in that don't need to be plugged in, but they like drain energy, like they're called vampire um, energy drainers, like you should go through, um, uh, go through and see what's being plugged in that's pulling power that you might not realize. Um, make sure you're turning off your lights. I know that sounds silly, but I have three kids and a husband who like to go through, they'll turn on all the lights and then they leave and then all the lights are on and I come home and all the lights are on and I turn them off and I have no clue how long they have been gone for. So do the things that you can to, um, you know, reduce your energy consumption. And the other thing is if you are living in an area where you do have um, time of use and you're not solar powered, you want to sh load shift. So you want to make sure you're doing big energy draws during the non-peak hours. Because right now in Southern California, Edison, PG&E, and I'm sure down in SDGE, um, it is about 50 cents a kilowatt hour for like peak hours. It's crazy the rates that I'm seeing. So if you can get in the habit to wait until after 9 p.m. or before 4 p.m. And even when you go solar, you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to do that. You might look at um, adding a whole attic, uh, uh, attic fan in your in your attic, a whole home attic fan to pull the hot air out of your uh, out of your attic and blow it out, so that you're not using so much energy to air conditioner air condition or cool your house, especially as we're approaching the summertime months. The other thing that you want to be aware of is we're switching utilities are switching from winter winter rates to summertime rates. So if you see an increase in your billing, it might be because you're being switched over to summertime rates. So a whole home attic fan might be a good option, especially just to cool off the um, the, the temperature in your house so you use less air conditioning. There are really cool. Um, Oh, a, a smart home electronic things that you can do. Like you can put a smart thermostat in your house so that it's it'll keep your house um, from, you know, in a, a good temperature zone. So you're not just running your air conditioning like crazy in the summertime. And maybe you just have to acclimate to it not being super, super cold like we're used to in this in the wintertime and springtime. But the smart thermostats are really good. Uh, the other things are there are um, electronic devices that you can have installed to your thermostat on your wall inside your house. And what it does is it will, um, it, when the air conditioning goes off, uh, the cold air will sit inside the, the ducts and it won't move. And so all that energy that was generated to create that cold air just kind of dissipates. So I'm learning more about this technology. It's really amazing. And what it will do, this tech, this smart um, chip, what it will do with your thermostat is once the thermostat goes off, um, the the smart chip will tell the air conditioning fan, the fan and the blower to just continue to blow for the next couple of minutes so that it's pushing all the cold air so you're not losing it just because it said, the thermostat said, oh, it hit 74 Time to turn it off, but there's all this cold air sitting inside your your ducts. They want you; it'll push it out until it's completely gone. So, I mean, I, I know that sounds silly, but the biggest draw on your energy is air conditioning units. So there are lots of things you know you can do um, blackout shades in the like we have all south facing doors and windows on the back of our house. So we put um, what are those blackout curtains? So it helps at least keep the heat out of the house when so we don't have to use our air conditioning as much so there are a lot of things that you can do even as a renter 
or, uh, you know, um, commercial building that's a little bit different. You'd have to really visit the what your employees and all the in, uh, workers are doing. But, you know, just make sure that you're using energy efficient appliances in your home. Um, I don't think that that should be a problem, given that most utilities or not utilities, equipment, uh, home appliances and things like that. They don't they don't seem like they have the longest shelf life like they used to. Uh, so anyhow, you know, just make sure you're using Energy Star uh, equipment in your home and business. Um, make sure that you're unplugging things that you're not using. Turn off the lights when you can and put a whole home attic in your in your attic fan in your attic. I'm sorry. That was a tongue twister. Uh, look into putting a whole home attic fan into your attic. You might also want to look at your insulation because insulation doesn't only just keep the cold out in the winter. It also insulates your home from the heat in the summertime. So yeah, so there you have it. All right. Well, that those are the three reasons why people might not be able to go solar. Reason one, overall cost of the project might not pencil out for them financially. They really have to be on board to go solar. Solar is such a wonderful thing. Like I love it that we have our solar system um, on our house. We don't, we don't, we still are very conservative with our energy, but it's just, we're not relying on coal being burned. We're not relying on a huge demand generation and transmission charges coming into our house for um, traditional electricity. And we've got our solar power. So, um, but you know, for you guys, it, in states where maybe it's 12, 13 cents a kilowatt hour, you really have to th consider it like, are, is it for energy independence? Is it for clean energy? Is it for helping the planet? Are you okay with paying a, a penny or two penny mo more per kilowatt hour? Because we do know that the utilities are going to continue to raise the rates. They've already kind of announced it. And where I live, pg e has already raised the rates three times this year. It's crazy. Um, the second reason is too much shade or not enough roof space. Um, we do have large watt panels, um, 440 watt panels, but the larger the, you go, the bigger foot, the footprint of those solar panels. So you just have to make sure you have enough roof space. But the nice thing is, is they're not that much bigger than say a 400, four or three, 385, 375, or even a 350 watt panel. Um, they're still going to produce more energy for you than if you were to use a smaller panel. So um, that's something to consider if you're thinking of solar and you have a smaller roof space. Um, and people, you know, like I just said, they either rent their house or they lease their building if they're a commercial building. So that's that's the le that's not as tricky to get over as the other ones with with shading and not enough roof space and whatnot. So. Um, so yeah, so if you're interested in solar, you can reach out to me on my website at jamiegreenthesolarqueen.com. Uh, that is a place where you'll see my face in a little video explaining, saying thank you and welcome to, thank you for visiting and welcome to my website. You'll have the opportunity if you want to fill out a little form to give me information more about your home. Um, I am going to be adding probably a business, uh, a commercial side to that um, form so that it's uh, people can go to that as well. If you're a business owner, there's so many wonderful incentives for going solar. Um, you can go there and you can fill it out and then you can self set an appointment. If you don't want to do that, you can just reach out to me on social media and you can send me a message uh, if you'd like to do that. Or on my website, there is a phone number that you can call and it'll ring to me. Um, if you want to learn how solar works and what to expect, the entire process and journey, you can go and watch this. Um, you can go to what to expect when going solar.com. I know it's a long URL, but you can go to there, go to that, and you can um, watch an entire series of videos so that you become fully educated on the entire process. Because at the end of the day, it is a construction project. And good thing for you if you're watching this and you decide to go solar with me, my background, my professional background is actually in project management, program management, because I used to work for Boeing and I traveled all over the world, which is why I have this lovely map behind me with all the pins of all the locations I've been to. I would, I manage major airlines training programs from beginning to end, from the planning stage to the very end when they took delivery of the airplanes. 
So um, that's kind of my expertise. And in, in, believe it or not, so going solar is a construction process. And there's lots of things that you have uh, that are going on behind the scene to make that solar system generate power for, for you and your home and your household uh, from the sun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Solar Sunday. I talked a long time, um, but I wanted to at least share some reasons why people might disqualify or not be able to go solar. Another reason might be is just it kind of ties into the overall cost of the project and it might not pencil out financially. But one of the other reasons might be because their credit is just not um, not where we need it to be if they wanted to finance a solar system. There are options around that. So. Oh, Richard Bouchard. I think it's Boucher. You're the best. You're in Ver oh, gosh, not Vermont. Tell me where you're at again. I know you're in the North New Hampshire. You're in New Hampshire. Um, I hope you're doing well. I didn't get to see you at the last growth conference. I'm really sad about that, but um, I hope that you're doing well. And if your friends that have the query are quarry are still interested in solar, you should talk to me. We should um, connect and do that. Um, yes. I knew it. See, New Hampshire. Gosh, I have New Hampshire. I have Florida. I have Arizona. I don't think I have any Californians watching. That's okay. Um, so anyways, have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Happy Sunday to you. Reach out to me if you're interested in solar and here at jamiegreenthesolarqueen.com and then make sure to share this out. If you know anybody um, in commercial who has a commercial building or industrial building who might want solar and save a tremendous amount of money on, on their, because of the tax credit depreciation and then reducing their overall operating expenses. I can help almost every single kind of corporation business go solar. The only thing is, again, it has to pencil out and be financially feasible for them. And for us as the installer and the developer of the project. So we're talking bigger, bigger projects um, that if for the commercial side, it really makes sense. For the homeowners, as long as you're paying over at least 12 cents a kilowatt hour, we can make things work for you guys. So I can make things work for you. So that is it. Happy Sunday. See you guys all next week. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for your comments and questions.